Hello again folks, this is Barry with Barry's 8-Track and Classic Car Radio Repair and we, today we have another uh, sort of unusual uh, conversion job to demonstrate. Uh, this is a 1967 Chevy Impala radio, uh, AM mono radio and uh, on this conversion the customer uh, did not want all the guts ripped out and replaced with new electronics uh, so uh, in that case to add FM we have what's called an FMC module put out by Aurora Design another great product and all that does is it just adds FM reception capability but the radio keeps all of its circuitry nothing is removed from the radio this uh, this FMC board simply tacks in on top of everything else and adds FM of course uh, since it's not a stereo radio the FMC is designed only to uh, pick up uh, mono FM signals and since the uh, radio's amplifiers and the car's speakers were only uh, required to pick up AM, reproduce AM, uh, it won't have nearly the sonic quality that uh, that you're used to hearing from FM stereo today. You'll notice that the, uh, the radio won't sound as bright as uh, other radios I've demonstrated demonstrated and that's because we're still using the radio's original electronics and amplifiers so uh, this is going to be a, just a really quick basic test just to uh, kind of show you how the FM performs uh, it does also uh, offer a line input and since of course it's a mono radio with a mono amplifier uh, you'll only get one channel uh, you know we do combine both channels with the aux input but uh, obviously the radio only has one amplifier so it can only reproduce uh, one channel of sound now one thing that I'll uh, explain about this is that uh, when you're using an auxiliary input uh, with a mono amplifier uh, the music may sound a little bit weird on some songs and that's because of phase cancellation which I go into on my website under the uh, tab called speakers I explain a little bit about phasing and uh, basically uh, when you combine uh, left and right signals into one signal um, anything that is common to both channels could be partially removed because of phase cancellation and I won't go into all that technical terminology here I do explain it on my website under the uh, under the tab that says speakers there's a section called phasing under that near the bottom but uh, so uh, this test we're just going to just quickly demonstrate the capability of FM reception on this radio and of course we're going to give the line input a quick test to make sure that still works so let's go ahead and uh, turn it on I currently have it set to an AM station Yep. Now I do. <laughs> okay, and since the we know that the uh, AM radio is working because it had to work in order to install the uh, conversion and have it work, so we'll just go ahead and switch it over to FM. And I have all five push buttons set to FM stations. We'll just really quick run through all those so that we can make sure it works and to demonstrate, you know, this uh, this cool feature. Now to switch bands on this radio, we turn it off and then right back on within about half a second. Now unlike the full FMR conversion in which you turn it off and then right back on, uh, the FMC is a little bit more picky about how long you leave it off. Uh, if you turn it off and then right back on immediately, it's likely to stay on the same function and it will also stay on the same function if you leave it off more than about a second and a half to two seconds. So it takes a little practice to figure out exactly how long to leave the radio off before you can turn it back on and it'll change functions. So let's see if we can change, uh, and I don't even remember the sequence, uh, it will alternate between AM, FM, and AUX input, and frankly I kind of forgot, since I don't do many FMC conversions, I forgot the exact order, so we'll just go ahead and try it. Turn it off, on, okay now we got absolute silence, that means it's on the AUX input, so let's go ahead and just run a quick signal into the AUX jack just to make sure that it uh, makes it to the speakers. Okay, so there's so we fed a, a little tone into both sides of the aux input and we got it out of the speakers of course the volume can be adjusted with the radio so we know the aux function works so let's go ahead and switch it to FM now off on okay now I can tell by the little bit of noise that it's on FM so we'll just go ahead and run through the push buttons oh maybe it is still on AM okay so let's try this again there we go okay there's the FM band See, even I'm not really too used to how long to leave it off on the FMC conversion because I don't do a whole lot of those. So we'll just run through all the push buttons. And I'm only running this through one, you'll only hear this on the left side, uh, to kind of remind us that this is a mono radio and uh, not to expect a stereo reproduction. All right, next push button. Oops. Uh, 
Now this is obviously FM program material. And that is definitely FM material. <laughs> Alrighty. And of course the tone control works as it normally does. It doesn't uh, bring in any extra functions like it does on the uh, on the full-blown FMR conversion. But uh, the radio will now uh, receive FM and it'll receive it very well. It just won't be in stereo. And since it's not a stereo FM receiver, there of course is no possibility of installing an FM stereo indicator in that. Although we could, if the customer wants, install a front panel LED that will change color depending on what band it's tuned to or whether you use the auxiliary input so that's just a little food for thought and this is a this is a, a good option for the customer who does not want to really tear up the radio and make any irreversible changes uh, this little FMC module can be removed at any time with only one I think wiring change to uh, to put it completely back to its original state so with that being stated that was an FMC conversion on a, a mono 1967 Chevy Impala radio this is Barry at Barry's 8-track and classic car radio repair if you have a a radio or 8-track player that you would like me to work on with my proven results, you can uh, call me directly at 928-533-9666. My most popular website is Barry's 8-track repair. That's B-A-R-R-Y-S number 8, trackrepair.com. If you would like a website that's easier to remember, you can also visit classiccarradiorepair.com. This is Barry Phone. Thank you very much for watching and listening.